when we discovered that the obscure governor of uh, Arkansas, Bill Clinton, had attended his first Bilderberg meeting in Baden-Baden, Germany in 1991, we were able to anticipate a political future for the young man. When I discovered in 1991 that Bill Clinton had attended the Bilderberg meeting, I was able to predict that he would be the candidate for the presidency of the Democratic Party. I didn't think he'd be elected president, incidentally. And so they picked him. The Bilderbergers actually picked him to be the president. I will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Bill Clinton, like Jimmy Carter, was a product of the Rockefeller Empire. Bill Clinton uh, uh, has a few up on Jimmy Carter, though. Not only was uh, Clinton a member of the Trilateral Commission, but he was also invited to become a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. He had the uh, imprimatur of the Rockefeller and Rothschild families. Well, you know, I grew up like everybody, every other kid in the United States, thinking, ah, President of the United States, most powerful man in the world. But it's just not the case. You know, even Bill Clinton uh, has admitted that he is only a virtual president anymore. That was in a speech in September of uh, 1998. Just when you think the economy stable, just when you think you're made in the shade, someone changes the rule. Is there a conspiracy? If we are onto the fomenters of what's loosely called the New World Order, the free movement of capital and goods across national boundaries is clearly a big part of their agenda. The global elite have been the primary promoters of free trade precisely because of the fact that they are the ones who control the major multinational corporations. They are the ones who want to build televisions in Mexico and in impoverished third world countries and pay these people sub-minimum wages, slave wages, and then export them at gigantic profits back to the United States. But we're told by the major media in this country, which is tied in again with these international elites, that, oh, well, this is a temporary thing. It really is good for America, but it's not good for America. Look at anybody who's lost their job. Look at how their family suffers. That's the Bilderberg Group at work. That's the Trilateral Commission. That's the Federal Reserve, all these elite groups that they're benefiting, but the average American isn't. These families have been mostly in the banking business for at least 500 years, most of them. They were in the slave trade. Uh, they were in the opium trade because uh, these people are not interested in 5% a year return. They want 1,000% a year return. And to get into those things, you need, you need to get into gold, slaves, drugs. That's where the big money is. Fiat currency is what we have. Fiat, uh, meaning no thing, nothing, having no value. In other words, it's backed by the faith and credit of the person who is creating the money. If you have a uh, private bank out here that is uh, creating this money, then your faith is in their ability to keep the value of this currency uh, to where everybody accepts it. We have to understand that people, not governments, not central banks, nor nation states, but people ultimately determine what money is and what money is not. It's been that way for over 5,000 years. This brings us back to our initial question. Are we citizens of a great democracy or is something more convoluted and sinister at work? Is there anything wrong with the best and the brightest controlling our country or potentially in the near future the entire world? Are international financiers in control of our lives? Are they masters of the universe? What's wrong with an elite ordering world events? Uh, there's a lot of things wrong with that. The American people, at least, have always been told that they control their own destiny through their elected representatives. But uh, when you find their elected representatives behind closed doors, uh, surrounded by armed guards who will not let the general public in, and they're making decisions that affect the future of the American people and the, Amer and the people of the world, then there are legitimate questions as to uh, why this elite should be able to dictate things. The whole point of, of one world government is uh, uh, to eliminate the concept of nationalism. Now, why is eliminating nationalism bad if it would eliminate war? Well, the reason is if old, old British Lord Acton's axiom, that is absolute power, tends to corrupt absolutely. If you could print 
a billion dollars tomorrow, well, you could be a master of the universe. But you can't because they have the monopoly. As long as they can print the money, as long as they can buy the New York Times, the Washington Post, congressmen, senators, presidents, then you can't compete against them. Well, what have you got to offer? <laughs> if you have relatively few people uh, governing your government, you don't have a democratic government, do you? You've got a secret cabal here who is governing uh, the United States. And not just the United States, but the governments of England and France, Germany, uh, all the European countries. Less influence in Japan, but quite a bit there too. So it's a conspiracy against the people of the United States and of the Western world. What, you, what would you call it? Are the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and the people in their sphere of influence the masters of the universe? Let's put it this way, uh, they want to be the masters of the universe, but there are a lot of people who don't want them to be. They create money out of nothing. Uh, what a scam. They have so much money, they don't care about money. All they care about is power. All they care about is be able to control this, the political situation so it goes their way. But they still have not been able to succeed in America because of the wealth and the independence and the patriotic spirit of the American middle class. That's the only thing that's holding this world from a level, from a situation of total despotism. See, if I serve you a black cup of coffee and it's 95% coffee but 5% arsenic, it's mostly coffee, but it's going to kill you in the end. What we've been doing is we've been getting a truth era mixture of events going on around the world. Enough truth to uh, make it uh, seem plausible, but enough error to get you off course. A lot of it has to do with our educational systems, uh, where we've been dumbing our kids down. And, uh, and when you dumb them down, it's the cruelest form of censorship because most of this current generation can't even read the books that these guys would be scared of. It's only fitting that we end with a quote from the man who started it all, Woodrow Wilson, a dreamer who tried to change the world for the better, but who in his final years ended up regretting many of the important accomplishments attributed to his presidency. We are controlled by a small group of dominant men, he said, of the worst ruled and most completely controlled governments in the civilized world. Is there a sinister conspiracy in control of our lives? Are there masters of the universe? If there are, I'm not one of them, nor would I want to be. Democratic societies have always been the crowning glory of human civilization, and in a democracy, the people decide they don't have their decisions made for them. Masters of the universe, you've seen the evidence, you decide. Just when you think that your life has turned sunny, you're counting your money, tasting the honey. Just when you think you're ahead of the game, someone changes the rules. stable the interest is low inflation is slow just when you think you're made in the shade someone changes the rules